Okay, in this section I will go through some of the evidence on the role of the submacromial space and how this steers a lot of our treatment strategies. So around 1972, Nair, the orthopedic surgeon Nair, described the shoulder impediment mechanism as compression of the soft tissues in between the coracrochromial arc and the humeral head. It's a very known mechanism that is also very uh, much uh, uh, widespread. This slide summarizes the current evidence on the impediment syndrome. So first, the anatomical complexity of our joints and the shoulder uh, joint in specific makes it impossible to target one specific tissue during clinical examination. This explains why, why most of our shoulder physical examination tests fail at diagnosing, for instance, rotator cuff related shoulder pain. Apart from the complexity of typical pain as the outcome for these tests and the knowledge that pain might not be the most reliable parameter in this population, our diagnostic tests are designed from the perspective of impingement mechanism. For instance, the Hawkins-Kennedy test, the Job test, the near sign, all are designed to provoke the supracromial space, but none of them succeed at that. Are we maybe searching for a mechanism that does not exist? Next, several medical imaging studies have shown that radiologists are not able to differentiate between healthy subjects and patients with the so-called impingement syndrome. MRI, plain X-ray, ultrasound studies, of course they cannot, because why should they be, what should they be looking at? Should they be looking at a small suprachromial space, a thickened supraspinatus tendon, curved acromions? None of them have shown to be a valid tool to diagnose suprachromial pain. And um, yes, also no scientific proof that the shape of the acromion is the cause of shoulder pain. In fact, most of the supraspinatus tendons show their injuries at the humeral side and not at the acromial side, which should have been the case in, if the acromion was to blame. And finally, supracromial decompressions, which focus on increasing the supracromial space, have no proven benefit above placebo decompressions. So if you increase the supracromial space and the patient does not get better, it is time to reflect on what you are doing. Anyway, it does not seem useful in fighting supracromial decompressions as long as physiotherapy has not employed its full capacity in these patients. So there is no need in being against supracromial decompressions. We should just focus on being in favor of conservative interventions. And that is why we uh, will have to focus on that during this course. And at the end, several researchers have explored the literature and searched for evidence that the supracromial space is to blame, but they were all disappointed. Uh, there is no evidence that the supracromial space is to blame, and consequently there is no evidence that we should keep on using the term impingement syndrome. So in the contrary, there is growing evidence to avoid this term, as patients will avoid moving their arm if they believe that some impingement is going on in their shoulders. Consensus is rising to use the term rotator cuff related shoulder pain. If you need a good and acceptable and above all more correct explanation for the patient's shoulder pain, this is what you can uh, use. And as you can see here on the presentation, uh, your pain is probably coming from your muscles and tendons in and around the shoulder. They lack capacity and uh, it might be, that might be the reason for the pain that you feel in your shoulder when lifting your arm. Eh? This capacity is an example, it's for example strength, tolerance, general fitness, and uh, due to this lack of capacity, your tendons and muscles are overloaded and pain appears. This is a great explanation that you can give your patients in replacement of the shoulder impingement uh, syndrome terminology.